In the last video, we talked about how to use a composite fiber optic cable to send the low voltage power from the control room to the cameras. The client needed to install 20 IP cameras in the community. He planned to use the solar power system plus the fiber optic cable to install all these cameras. We presented an alternative solution by using a composite fiber optic cable to send the low voltage power from the control room. Eventually, he can eliminate the solar power system. I have put the link on the top right screen in case you want to review it. We leave one question. Can we use the Kfire K6 Ethernet cable to install all these cameras? We will try to explore the solution in this video. Here we got the 700 meter Ethernet cables. It's the Kfire Ethernet cables. There are three rows. We are using the copper to chain all these three rows cable together to get the 700 meter continue run. I'm thinking if we can do with the camera with the maximum long length, it's about 2,000 feet. We should be good with the rest of the cameras, right? We we'll connect the camera to these cables and we'll test the video and the rack. Now let's see what we have in the rack. We have replaced the 24 port fiber optical switch with two 24 port long range PoE switch in this rack. There are two groups of PoE ports in this long range PoE switch. The PoE port labeled in green has the long range chipset built in. It can push the data up to 800 meters, which is about 2,600 feet. These two groups are just the regular PoE ports, but there's CCTV mode. After we turn on the CCTV mode, this switch will step down the network speed of the first eight ports and extend the network up to 250 meters. There's trade-off between the speed and the distance. We got lower speed but longer distance. If the camera is less than 250 meters, we can connect those cameras directly to the first A port, but need to turn on the CCTV mode. And both switch are connected to the third switch on the bottom by using these fiber optic cables. We have the SAP transceiver on this SAP slot. This cable is connected to our network video recorder and we can have all the 20 cameras displayed on this network video recorder. On the top, we have the search protector. The cable coming from the outside will connect to the input port of this search protector first. The input doesn't mean the signal input, it means the cable could come with the search. And the output port will connect to our PoE switch. As we know, the longer the cable, the more chance the cable could offset the search. The search can travel to the both end, it could de damage our PoE switch or the network video recorder. That's the reason why we need a search protector to clean the search on the rack. All right, the setup is quite simple in the rack. Let's move to the camera. We have an outdoor PoE search protector next to the camera. Since we don't know which direction the search could travel to, it's better to have the search protectors at both ends to protect the device. The cable is connected to the input port of the search protector, and we got the output port. This is the grounding path, which will release the search to the ground. This is the PoE extender. You may wonder why we need the PoE extender, since the switch already can push the data up to 800 meters. Remember, the TCP IP network is the two-way communications. Even the PoE switch can push the data up to 800 meters. This camera is just the regular cameras. It cannot send back the signal so long. That's the reason why we need a search protector next to the camera to have the long range port to come up the 800 meters long run. This is the PoE cameras. It consumes about 12 watts. Now let's use the computer to test the live video with this camera. I'm going to connect this computer to the switch at the bottom and we'll use this PC software to watch the live video from the camera. Let me make the connection. This is the live video from the camera. This long-range PoE switch has established the network connectivity with the camera 700 meters away. Now let's recap what we have done. We connect that camera to this port label in green, which has the long-range chipset built in. Then we attach this cable to this search protector to cancel the search. And this is the cable going to the camera. 
we got three rows of cable, it's 700 meters. We have another outdoor PoE search protector next to the camera to cancel the search. And this is the PoE extender. We work with the long range PoE switch to come up with the 800 meters long run. So one thing I want to point out, if the camera lens is less than 250 meters, you don't need this PoE extender. We can step down the network speed to 10 megabit per second to achieve up to 250 meter long run PoE. Remember one thing we didn't draw out is why we need two PoE switch. We totally have 20 cameras, right? And this is the 24 port PoE switch. But we are getting two units. The reason is the power budget. This long range PoE switch only can supply total power budget 255 watt. And each camera consumes about 12 watt power budgets. We got 20 units. Totally, we need 240 watt total power budget for this camera. But we didn't count on the power loss in light. The longer the distance, the more power loss will be. So eventually, we may need at least 300 watt total power budgets. One 24 port PoE switch cannot supply that power. That is the reason why we need two units long range PoE switch in the rack. We need to divide the camera into two groups. Some will connect to the first long range PoE switch and others will come to the second long range PoE switch. All right, that's all for today's video. If you have any question, please post your message in the comment section below.